But how do Latinos see themselves? To answer that question, we will look at the Alternative Questionnaire Experiment, or AQE. So the alternative, uh, before the census adopts major changes, they conduct tests known as Alternative Questionnaire Experiments, or AQE for short. Before they allowed marking one or more races on the census, they conducted an AQE. In 2010, an AQE was conducted, and the results were released in 2012. So when you hear me talk about the AQE, it is this particular AQE that I am referring to. Now this is what I love about the census. The study went out to almost half a million households, huge number. Only the census can do a study this large. They either go big or they go home. So you don't see studies this big anywhere else. Uh, there were many small changes that were tested, but the most significant was asking what would happen if the race and ethnicity questions were combined into a single question. In other words, what if Latino were a race? Four different versions of the question were tested, known as panels. Sorry about that. There were up to 17 panels tested, including two control panels. Within those 17 panels, four of them treated Latino as a race in some form. I have shown them here. Um, I'm not going to go over them in detail. I highly recommend that you download the report yourself. It's free on the census gov website, just search for 2010 alternative question experiment and you can get all the data yourself. They found many things in the AQE, but I'm going to focus on four key areas that they found. First of all, they found no change in the percent of Hispanics in the population compared to the control panels. That's a good thing. If they're going to make a change, you don't want to have a decrease in the Hispanic population. They also had fewer non-responses. So Hispanics were very often um, skipped the race question because they either figured they answered the Hispanic question, they didn't need to answer the race question, um, or they were confused by the race question in some way and they didn't want to answer. The sum of the race category dropped to less than 1% from almost 6%. Um, looking at it another way, 97% of people that mark some other race also mark Latino. So anytime you see some other race in census reports, you immediately have to think Latino. Well, they stopped checking some other race. And this one's interesting. The white population dropped by 4 to 8 percent, which is a 5 to 11 percent uh, decrease in the white population. That's because many of those Latinos that were marking white stopped checking white. The funny thing about this is in the press release that went out uh, announcing these results, they conveniently didn't mention this one for some reason. I don't know why. You can make your own conclusions on that. And this last point is probably of the most interest to uh, the mixed community. The two or more population jumped to almost 7%. Currently, it's about 3%, but with Latinos being able to check off race, Latino as a race, they were much more likely to check off two or more races, thus increasing the two or more population to 7%. So if that number were applied to the mixed race community today, we could say that the most common mixed race experience is a mixed Latino experience. All those new people that would now be counted as mixed race because they're on the two or more category have some Latino identity. And if you think about all the conversations that the multiracial community is having today, you will find that many of them are resolving around um, um, two main mixtures, the black-white mix and the Asian-white mix. And yet, there's this whole community of mixed Latinos that is not being talked about at all. This is part of the reason why MASK created the Latinas and Latinos of Mixed Ancestry program known as LOMA. There's a whole group of mixed people out there of which we know very little about because their information is either being parsed out into separate groups or it's being swallowed up in an aggregation of groups. This next census may be the first time we really get a window into this community of people. Now you may be wondering what the Census Bureau thought of these findings. Along with the release of the report, the Bureau put out the following statement from the then director of the Bureau, Robert Gross. Quote, 
The U.S. Census Bureau is committed to improving the accuracy and the reliability of census results by expanding our understanding of how people identify their race and Hispanic origin. And the findings from this research provide promising strategies to address the challenges and complexities of race and Hispanic origin measurement and reporting issues in our rapidly diversifying society. End of quote. This appears as though the Census Bureau is leaning toward favoring this implementation. Stay tuned because we will likely hear more coming up in the next few years. But before we get too gung ho behind these results, we need to consider some of the unintended consequences. Uh, I'd like to conclude by just going over the uh, Department of Finance projections again. Remember uh, how they created a mixed race category. Well, if Latino becomes a race, then the Department of Finance would not need to create a Latino category by subtracting numbers from other groups. They would simply go to the Latino racial category and read that number off. But also recall that they created a multi-race category. Anybody that marked two or more races got put into a multi-race category. So to follow that same methodology, if Latinos marked two or more races, they would have to be counted as the multiracial category. And according to the AQE, about 25% of Latinos marked two or more races. So using their own methodology, they would have to reduce the Latino population by 25% and add all those numbers to the multi-race population. And as you can see, there big deal is being made how Latinos are a plurality in California. Well, as you can see now, the Latino line doesn't cross the white line until sometime in 2035. Okay? So, what would happen if this happened in California? Will this pit Latinos against mixed race people in seeking to claim numbers for political gain? Or is this instead an opportunity for the Latino community and the mixed race community to work together to raise awareness of the fluidity and complexity of racial identity. I think it's a time for us to start having conversations with the state of California about their methodology. So in conclusion, Latinos seem to have found their racial home in the census 2010 AQE. The mass media reflects how the social construct of Latino is a race. Uh, counting a Latino as a race may mitigate offset data results, minimize biased data, and make data man manipulation more obvious because now it's not a separate category. And it increases the accuracy by recognizing mixed Latino ancestry. A few final thoughts. Research is needed on, more research is needed on mixed Latinos. We really need to flesh out um, what these changes might mean. Get ready for a comment period on the census. Before the census implements this change, they're likely going to solicit comments from the general public. So if you want to be aware of when these things are happening, please sign up, give us your contact information. Part of the LOMA program is there to get this information out there. Uh, Mask wants to partner with you. This is my bibliography. If anybody wants to see all the research, come see me. I'll be happy to send it to you. Uh, thank you. Any questions?